Thanks for joining me at the Nines today. My name is Frank Turk, and I'm a blogger, and you can read more about me in the author bios if you find any of today's talk especially compelling. And before I, I go at this, I was tempted to tell you about my last week and my this week as I prepared for the talk, but, you know, as far as that goes, you probably don't want to know how I do it. I mean, what I do is work in the global supply chain for the renewable energy industry, and my job is kind of like being Batman, you know, it's with, but it's without the unlimited Wayne Industries resources and without the really cool bat cave office space you know but with all the same assortment of crazy people who need to be corralled and contained and incarcerated i mean i'm a guy who works in a wholly secular industry with its own theology and end time strategy and i get it that it seems to be a good thing to be a professional person with a word of wisdom because i do such a great job but but here's the thing i know for a fact that my way of doing anything is prone to one thing only and that's making much of me making sure I stay important and I stay needed. And, and that's why I think of myself as Batman, right? I mean, dark and cool and utterly necessary, even if people have to fear me. But look, I believe in the real Jesus. And the first thing that has to mean is this, I am not him. I, I can't be him. I, I, I can't lead like Jesus because I'm not Lord of all. I have to lead like someone Jesus has saved. If I can start my engagement with other people by knowing there's a real Jesus and I'm not him, but subject of his ridiculous sacrifice, I can probably knock off about two-thirds of my natural tendency to pounce on the wicked from the shadows because I have to realize that I am the wicked and I could have been rightly struck down by God. But instead, he saved me. Now, the guys who follow Jesus around have this same problem. You can imagine when James and John's mother asked Jesus if her boys could be his left hand and right hand med, the other apostles were, were a little worked up. But, but he said to them, look, the, the kings and leaders of the people without God are in the authority business. They're the ones who are worried about who's in charge. But, but with you, it shouldn't be like that. With you, whoever would be great must be a servant. You know, the Greek word there is waiter. And, and Jesus made sure that we got the point because he said it this way. You must be a servant even as the Son of Man came, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Another time Jesus said it plainly that I'm the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. You know, a hired hand is not a shepherd. He doesn't own the sheep, and he runs away when the wolf comes because he doesn't care anything for the sheep. Jesus says that the way you get great in his order of things is by laying down your life for other people, not by becoming like the best in class among those who have a different economy than God. You know, let me be honest. I find myself caught up in this all the time. So when I sit down to do my work, or something like ministry, I know I need to check myself to make sure that the means and motives of the ungodly are not pushing out my fundamental love for Jesus and also for his people, some of whom are not saved yet. Think about it. Are you seeking how to lead God's people until Jesus returns? If that's true, what are Jesus' means and method for achieving his ends? I only have another minute or so, so here's a short list of those things. Saying the things that God has said rather than the things that the world says. Confessing our sins not just in general, but specifically when we blow it. Loving our wives the way Christ loves the church. Suffering for those who cannot pay us back. Giving up glory the way Christ gave up glory to show people real love rather than just good manners. I, I can't lead the right way. That's, that is the way Jesus calls me to. If I do it my way, I have to do it his way, which is the way that saved me in the first place. And if instead I want to be a leader who sits at his left hand or his right hand, Jesus tells me plainly, I'm doing it wrong. I need to be a servant for the sake of others and to die for them. And listen carefully, if that's true for a guy who works at a secular job, how much more true is it for those of you who are working inside God's house with God's people? Does your model of leadership look like a servant who dies for the sake of other people? Or does it look like you're getting all the right people on the bus so you can get into the flywheel effect and out of the doom loop? 
Think of that today because Jesus wants you to think about that. That is explicitly how he said to do it, and this is your chance to listen to him. My name is Frank. Enjoy the rest of your day.